for a full return to school in September. That's the crucial thing that we all want to see. Uh, it's, it's not right that kids should uh, spend more time out of school. Uh, it's much, much better for their, for their health, their mental well-being, their, obviously their educational prospects. If everybody comes back to school full-time in September, it's our moral duty as a country. Michael Tilsley joins us now live from Coventry in the UK. He is an associate professor of life sciences at the University of Warwick. Thanks so much for being with us. Is, is Boris Johnson being hasty here, or does the UK need a leader that just says... It's time. We have to reopen schools. We have to start life as normal again. Well, I think when it comes to reopening schools, of course, what we what we forget about is actually the long term damage of children being out of education for a long period of time. So I think we do need to do what we can to make sure that children get back into full time education. The danger is not actually around the risk of school in isolation. We know that children are much less likely to have severe symptoms. We know that they play a lesser role in the infection process than the older age groups. But the risk is actually with schools opening up along with all the other relaxation measures. So it's possible that opening schools along with opening pubs and restaurants and so forth could cause the reproduction number to rise above one and could cause a second wave. So that's the element of caution. I think we do need to reopen schools in the safest way possible, but we might need to be mindful of the risk in association with the reopening of other sectors. Right. Uh, Michael, is there any real risk that the UK could return, you know, to what we saw in March, April and May, severe cases again with high fatalities, or at the very least, is that miserable peak at least behind Great Britain? Well, I certainly hope that that time is behind the UK. I mean, we are in a phase now where we're seeing isolated clusters of cases um, occurring in various cities around the country, and these are being managed with local controls. Um, if that's successful and if we can get testing and tracing working efficiently, then the hope is that we won't need to go to, to larger scale lockdown. But this is a very critical time. It's really important right now that people abide by the social distancing measures that are in place, keep up their good hygiene practices, and essentially behave in the way that actually overwhelmingly the vast majority of people have so far, so that we don't progress back to larger scale lockdowns that we saw earlier in the year. Uh, Michael, you uh, were talking a little bit about this uh, in your first answer there, but can you give us a better idea of just, you know, how badly children are affected by COVID-19? I mean, are they more really just those asymptomatic carriers that put the greater numbers of society at risk, or are more and more of them actually getting very sick from this illness? Well, I mean, overwhelmingly, the, the vast majority of young people, particularly primary age children, so children under about 11, tend to have very, very mild symptoms or are completely asymptomatic. Um, the slightly higher age groups may have slightly more symptoms. Um, and so actually, the risk of an individual child getting very sick if they go to school is extremely low. The bigger risk is children do play a role in transmission. Um, and there's some uncertainty in what that role is. Anything, any, a child is anything from about a third to a half as infectious as an adult. Um, but they do play a role. And that's why it's important that with reopening of schools, that is done with certain measures in place, um, social distancing where possible, children in bubbles of small groups of children where possible, in order to minimise risk of large-scale transmission occurring as a result of reopening of schools. Okay. Michael, thank you so much for that. We really appreciate it.